Good morning, everybody. It is Kevin, and it is a beautiful Wednesday morning. I'm losing track of time with this this uh, quarantine thing. I, I get my days and nights mixed. Uh, my days mixed up. Got my days and nights mixed up last night because I was uh, I worked. I worked until about one this morning uh, mixing audio for a video and editing video. And it's funny that the video was cut outside in the woods with a dog barking in the background and wind blowing over the microphone. And, uh, and I, you know, I put it in, in the, uh, in the, showed it some pro tools love and, uh, and we mixed it and then I put it with the video. So should be a lot of fun. Um, but, um, so this morning I wanted to break things up just a little bit because, um, um, a friend of mine, Lizzie, Long just came out with her second solo record, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Talk about maybe a little behind the scenes stuff because it's got some got some cool elements to it. Uh, one element is that she came here to do her vocals, uh, and we did it at Capitol Records um, in the D room on Frank Sinatra's old microphone. So that's a talking point, right? Uh, so anyway, I thought I would bring Lizzie on, and uh, Wayne was supposed to come, but I think Wayne uh, had a uh, an appointment a dental appointment that he had to go to. So I don't think he'll come. And if he does, we may not be able to understand him. So, cause he will have just come from the dentist, but anyway, uh, so if, uh, without any further, uh, ado, let's, uh, let's get Lizzie on. Hey Lizzie. Hey, how y'all been? <laughs> so, uh, Lizzie, uh, I have been keeping up with you a little bit on Facebook and I know that you had a, like a terrible car wreck, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, right? I did like a week week or two ago. Sure did. I uh, flipped a truck three times, and uh, I'm here to talk about it. But I still got glass coming out my chin and mm. a big old pump. Mm. My, both my eyes is not black no more. <laughs> <laughs> you had a big old uh, hematoma. Oh, is that what it's called? Yeah, hematoma. It goes all the way this way. You know, it's a big old knot. Wow. Two more this way. What did you, What did you hit? They said I hit the, um, like when I flipped, I flipped sideways because I hit a culvert. So when I did, my head went like this and hit the A-frame right there. Mm. The, well, it's like this. So it goes mm. down this way. But I hit hit the window, the front A-frame of the truck, whatever you call it. And uh, so, yeah, mm. I got a perfect indention starting right here. <laughs> you can see it the where the truck hit. And it goes all the um. way like this. Did in my skull, but I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> you, seem, you, seem normal. Huh? you seem normal, like old Lizzie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lizzie, <you're> still here. <laughs> well, let's talk, let's talk about this record because uh, this this is your second solo record. Was I right on that? Yes. I know you, your first one was called Blueberry Pie, That's and right. it was we did that totally in my studio in Nashville. That's right, Murfreesboro. We got the tracks there. We got your vocal there. We mixed it there, and then this one, um, you did it. You did it a little different this time. You uh, you wanted to become a California girl, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your vocal in California. California, baby. Well, the uh, you moved to California, so that was probably some of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the, they uh, had a chance to go to Capitol Studios. And record in that studio there, the legendary Capitol record studio, and uh, sang on Frank Sinatra's mic and Judy Garland's mic, which is pretty exciting. You was there. In fact, you was, we had a little technical difficulty. One of the wires, remember, on mm -hmm. one of the mics was uh, kind of short. out. Yeah. Kevin was like, well, I got a mic here that's just as good. I was like, no, the whole <laughs> idea is playing on the Frank Sinatra mic. <laughs> Yeah, it's got some. It's got some it because they didn't want to just. I mean, they had the Judy Garland mic and box right there, and the cable looked just exactly like the Frank Sinatra mic. I was like, well, just use that cable. They're like, no, we don't mix nothing up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah. yeah, that place is a lot of fun to work at. There's just there's something to be said for going into a studio and knowing that. Um, that the people that have gone before you, you know, that have been there and they've had the amount of success they've had in there. I mean, you walk around, it's a round building. So you walk on one end of the hall and you end up coming back to the same place. You don't have to turn around. So no. I found myself like, you know, in between takes when 
Ira Glylock, who was the assistant on that session, uh, when he was doing some stuff, I just found myself walking around looking, uh, looking at pictures on the walls. And it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, inspiring to say the least right it was very inspiring from thinking i could smell the salami that frank sinatra had ate that day in the mic or the uh or thinking that i might have used the bathroom that judy garland sat on <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? yeah it was very inspiring oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well so some of the songs you picked for this record or you and wayne picked were really pretty cool um a couple that come to mind that I can remember. Why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the like none? I mean, this is a bluegrass record, straight up bluegrass record, but it doesn't have like all bluegrass. Like, traditional, yeah, because kind of a traditional bluegrass song is like you know you love somebody and then you kill them and then you go to heaven together, sort of thing. Well, we did have one murder battle. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a Lord. spooky song. It was a mystery murder ballad. Yeah, it is a mystery. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, me and Wayne and uh, Joel wrote that song, and then uh, really, I let my husband listen to it. He just kind of went. Yeah, did he get a little scared? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's, it, it's all right. <laughs> but yeah. We wrote. Uh, we did two Broadway songs. When we said this is a full bluegrass album, and it is, and like you said, it doesn't have. When you listen to it, it's actually Noam Pilkelny playing banjo on it. And uh, to me, that kind of makes it not sound so blue. I'm so used to hearing Little Roy's like, Urgh. you know, he's got that, Urgh. and Norm is really laid back. You know, he's really mm -hmm. melodic banjo playing. That's, that's one of the things I was going to ask you is the, some of the, the band on this one is different than you. I um, mean, you may have used some of the players, but I know Brian Sutton was on there. Yeah, Brian. And, Hutton, Stuart Duncan, Noam County, and Dennis Crouch. I have never had them on any of my albums, and they were fantastic. They were fantastic. And, yeah, and Norm was great in his own way. Little Roy, he is taking him while he eats it. He's like, why he picked like that on that? I don't understand why he picked like that on it. He should have just went in. Eh, he should get it. Get it. Yeah, it's not like Little Roy. <laughs> but, uh, Let's yeah. see your Little Roy impression. Oh, Lord. Lazy. Lizzie, Lizzie, what, 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 where my heart felt? To, to, to my banjo. I done tuned this thing, this plastic thing ain't tuned. Kevin waiting on us, tune the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, re I remember uh, uh, one story from Little Roy. It was like, uh, yeah, we're in the studio, and the engineer, I think, it wasn't getting the banjo sound right. And he, uh, Little Roy, was, you know, getting mad and doing his, his little lip smack thing. They came in the yeah, control. Room. In, yeah. Little Roy's about. Five foot ball of energy. He's like a little chihuahua dog, if y'all don't know. Him. <laughs> but he's a little midget that plays a banjo. But anyway, <laughs> we, he was in that studio right there on 8th Avenue, kind of right there on, I can't think what that road is all of a sudden, but there was a corner studio right there at, on, when you turn, I can't think what that road is. We don't have to out anybody. Yeah, but anyway, probably don't. We don't have to out anybody. Yeah, anyway. So, <laughs> thanks. But anyway, he was in there trying to play a banjo, and they 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 kept not getting it. They, I don't know. The studio engineer just wasn't getting it. You know, he hadn't been around bluegrass music or something. Little Roy got PO'd and swung them headphone mics about 40, 11 times and threw them up against the wall. Then he walked in there and took that banjo and put it right side that engineer's face and said, and picked it just as hard as he could go. He said, that's a banjo. That's what I want it to sound like on this album. You put that in them headphones. Now get me a new set of headphones. <laughs> oh, was it the headphones? Well, he threw the headphones, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, I guess it headphones, but it was also the album. The banjo just didn't sound, it sounded tubby, you know, not crack yeah. like that. Yeah, that's one of the things that, you know, I'm, I, I try to tell the guys that I'm showing how to mix what I call a, uh, a timeless style of music, which bluegrass is, is one of those things where in 50 years, you can listen to two records that were done currently and one that was done 50 years ago, and they're not going to be different. They're not going to have the new yeah. and latest, greatest verb on them. They're not going to have, you know, I mean, it, it's going to be timeless. And one of the things that, that a lot of engineers do is they'll try to find their worth and how much they did to something to make it sound different. And it's like, bluegrass is not like that. No, you we don't care. Like the instrument. They we pay don't we don't care where your ego's taking you. You put that music right like it's supposed to. You know, the banjo's an instrument. 
you put highs and kind of like you don't really have a lot of mids on a banjo. And then I'm talking from my live audio, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, you might do some more stuff to it, but in there, uh, for example, I've been listening to stuff on Sirius XM radio bass. I mean, uh, bluegrass music on there and the basses they have the basses just i mean it ain't when you turn it on right here it's all supposed to be even and this is something i tell kevin too even with vocals the the thing with bluegrass music is all of that is the same level that's what we strive everybody mm -hmm. is the same let the music's yeah. the same level all the harmonies are the same level the lead is the same level now it might not be like that when you cut it but by God, that's what we want when we hear it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, nobody sticks out. And most of the time, everybody wants you to turn the DAM banjo down. Well, that's uh, that's one of the things that I, when I teach people how to mix this sort of music, I say, this is a concept that I have called mixing for the moms. And that's uh, like everybody on the record, their mom needs to hear it and go, I can hear my, I can hear my son or my daughter playing on the record. That's and right. that's, that's when, you know, you kind of got everything even is when you can listen for the, the little banjo lick and you hear it, um, it, you know, if they play it well. And you know what I noticed? A lot of folks are missing out on their on these new groups speaking that I listen out on serious. And I know people are probably like, well, you're young. You ain't been, I've been in this business almost 28, 30 years now. How am I? Yeah, that's about right. But anyway, they you don't hear a rhythm guitar in there no more. You don't hear the strings. Mm. They, like they everybody just wants to flat pick, but you don't hear. So my big thing when I tell folks too, is, you know, I want to be able to hear that crank, that chain just a little bit too mm -hmm. on the rhythm guitar. That gets mm -hmm. kind of drowned out a little bit. Yeah. How many instruments do you play Lizzie? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. okay. You play, uh, let me name some uh, weird instruments that they don't have in South Georgia. <laughs> I mean, anything in the acoustic range I could play. Yeah. You know, and I have, and I could play most brass instruments where I did at one point in time. I can't have really? it practicing <laughs> all that yet. So I probably, it would take me a week or two to get my little chops back. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the record, uh, there's a, I know there's a couple of, we were, we kind of got sidetracked a little bit. Tell, oh, yeah. tell me about some of the, like you did a couple of Broadway songs. I know you did a Queen song, right? We did do a Queen song. I love Queen. I grew up in the time when Queen was big in school and we were, we were rocky, all that great stuff. Everybody stomped yeah. bleachers and all. But there was one song that Brian Mays wrote, the more I wrote, the more that I heard it, I was like, man, that'd be a bluegrass song. That'd be a great bluegrass song. It's kind of 7-Eleven-ish, you know, that same repeating of stuff that Little Roy like. I did not know when we got into it that they changed the chords about 70 million times, but <laughs> uh, we got through that. <laughs> we did that. Um, it's the song called Keep Yourself Alive, which is also when we recorded it, did not know that there was going to be a pandemic either, so... No, what? Oh, yeah, it's an appropriate not, song, right? Nor did I know I was going to have a wreck. So, none of that was planned. I had a lot of people ask me, it's like, y'all must have known the COVID was coming. Y'all <laughs> recorded this when COVID. I said, I recorded this way before there was COVID, and I recorded yeah. it way before I even thought about having a wreck. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, when we did it, you know, a lot of people are like, how do you hear that to do a bluegrass song? Well, when you get past all the electric guitars and the drum, it's mainly the rhythm. But you just kind of where it starts for me is the banjo. If I can hear a banjo in a song, uh -huh. oh, I can bluegrass that thing up. And that yeah. helps because I know how to play a banjo. So if I think I can play banjo on it, yeah. oh, it's coming bluegrass. Yeah. yeah. It's got that tempo where it's got it's a good bluegrass roll sort of tempo. Yeah. Yeah. So now, when we recorded it, Wayne, we, we kept a little don't, do, do, don't, do, do, don't, do, do, don't, do, do, don't, you know, and it little Roy when. It, Norm Pickney County, sorry, recorded it. But when I got home, you know, to work at Little Roy, but I got him to do it. He done it good. He did. He did it real good. It just took me about three weeks of bashing my head in harder than I hit that truck for him to do it. But it got. <laughs> Well, so is it growing on him, you think, or he's just tolerating it? Did, it did grow on him. He finally was like, man, I love that song. <laughs> he gave me, you know what, for it. But he, it, it is. It's great. And he loves them now. He likes to play them. But it just, boy, I had to sit there and just take his head and go, <laughs> 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 try to teach an old dog to do tricks, you know. <laughs> maybe you didn't have a wreck. Maybe you, maybe you got in the banjo 
So, yeah, uh, you're always swinging that ban- that's a banjo rim that swung and hit me upside the head. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so uh, what's another couple of what what's another couple of songs on the record that you that you're like it was like a maybe a sleeper song that you thought yeah it'll be okay but you're like man I really love that song. Oh, uh, you know? well we we were just talking about it a minute ago, but Woman Scorned, you know the murder ballad song, <laughs> the mystery murder ballad. Yeah. Uh, one night, me and Wayne and Joel first wrote that, and I come back home. California kind of working on it. And I, I kind of felt it more a little Mary Cunningham. But Wayne slowed it really down, kind of like a ballad almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Almost like House of the Rise of the Sun. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a little different for me because, you know, I don't really record a whole lot of minor sounding songs. And that was minors and death and murder all up inside that thing. And it was dark and. It's grown on me. I kind of enjoy it. You know, it's a it's a it's a haunting song, and it does grow on you. Yeah, I loved it, and I thought the musicianship on it, some of the stuff that the band was kind of adding in there, that's not that's bluegrass instruments, but it's not bluegrass um, approach to it. And in in fact, we tried all kinds of different things. I I think I remember trying to get Stuart Duncan to do some mountain claw hammer in the back, but it was too slow. If it had been the beat that I was thinking of, he could have done that like really movie mountain Mm -hmm. scary stuff. But uh, tell me about this banjo player on there, because I Googled him after I heard him play. I mean, everybody, everybody that played on this record, everybody played on your last record. I'm not dissing anybody. All of them. No, all of them are legit. Something, there was something like, I mean, I I would find myself rewinding just to hear what the banjo player played. Uh, Cause he, he approached it differently than Uh, than anything I've heard. Yeah. In fact, it took me a while to get used to the CD because I'm used to little Roy's, you know, hand. Like that. Y'all have ever see little Roy's hand? It's like everything's hundred miles an hour and strong and just I'm here and let's do this. And I'm almost like, Hey, I'm in the back. I'm in the corner back here. I'm good. Look at this power cord. <laughs> you know? But no, no, don't let that fool you though. Even though it's quiet, it is or whatever that, that he's a monster. I listened yeah. to his new record he's got out, and I was like, I watched one of the YouTube's he put out. His hand, I kid you not, was that was like that. On, I mean, he had his fingers spread out across the banjo like that. I mean, I was like, oh, like his left hand. Oh man, yeah, his cordon hand. Yeah, yeah I'm backwards. Here. His cordon yeah. hand was like what? Y'all need to look him up, Norm Pakilney. He's played with Bette Midler on her albums. He's done. He plays with the Punch Brothers, and now he's doing some stuff with Stuart Duncan. I think. Put his name for me. I'm gonna put it in the in the chat. Uh, Norm Pilkin Pakelny. I'll tell you, spell his last name: P I K E L N Y. Uh, let me just tell you what his album is. That's his new album. That's out. I just got it. Norm. Yeah, he, he's worth looking up. I mean. He, he he reminds he reminded me a little bit if you're talking about banjo and people want to pigeonhole the banjo but it's a it's a really cool instrument because it's got an open tuning and an unconventional uh, high string where the low string should be so you got this thing going on that's like uh, you can't tell which end is up sometimes right um, and Bela Fleck is one of the first guys that I heard really take the banjo and like take it off off the off the beaten path and and make make it something different i've been listening to a lot of uh um Bale fleck and the fleck tones lately with uh victor wooten playing bass on there it's just it's great okay know him okay yeah and that's the yeah. album it's called universal favorite can you see am I, am I oh, he's, uh, he's incredible yeah you need to check that out yeah so and then, and and that's a different version of banjo than what Little Roy is, you know. Mm-hmm. I want to look up Little Roy Lewis. That's it's like that's t- that's the two worlds. There's three different worlds. There's claw hammer, chromatic, and then Little Roy, which is Earl <laughs> I mean, really, it's like right. that's the three main differences. And yeah. you're gonna be like, oh no, this is great. So you can almost go to sleep playing, listening to that banjo. You cannot go to sleep listening to Little Roy's banjo playing because it's like in your face. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know if I told you this. I think it maybe I did. I was thinking one time it would be really funny 
for little Roy to be a superhero, like a cartoon superhero. And he wears a cape and everything. But when he meets a bad guy, he just walks up to him and, and like he, he does the guitar stand and he does his banjo. And the people yeah. go up. My, here comes the mighty midget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Um, Lizzie, it was a blast working with you on this record. And, oh, yeah. Um, I you know, mean, we've been working together you. since you were just a little. Um, a oh. little squirt that was from South Georgia. Yeah. That little Roy would bring around. And then That's the next right. thing you know, we did a record with uh Earl uh, Earl. Yeah. And we got to I remember I, I don't know if I have a copy of it anymore, but I remember we got Earl to play on a rap song. You remember that? that yeah, well, there's a YouTube of that. I seen it on YouTube here not too long ago and I was like, Oh my gosh, what did they make us do? But anyway, it is cool. You see, we talked about Earl had played every kind of music except rap. And then all of a sudden we were like, Oh, let's just see. And the next time that, <laughs> my mama kitten, I have kittens. If y'all hear that in the background, my mom, oh. mama cat had six kittens. So, so Lizzie, Lizzie plays every kind of instrument. She has every kind of animal and she has every kind of car. It seems like, and you, you and I share a love for Volkswagens. We do. Me and my oh. husband, we have like 40 of them. And, uh, Way too many old Volkswagens, old Elvis. You and I need to work out a deal for your next record because uh, there's a bus you've got that that I would. Yeah, I, the 21 window or the truck. I don't remember which the bus. Either one of them. <laughs> if it's a Volkswagen bus and it's not square. Yeah. It, it's, uh, don't know, we like don't it. have anything square. We just took yeah. the truck out and got it going again. The little uh, Volkswagen truck, the old one, the mm -hmm. it looks like a Volkswagen bus, but then it's got the you know, oh, yeah, uh, would jump at that. And I would love to drive it back back to California, too. So, yeah, you know, just, laying it out there. just laying it out there, Lizzie. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, uh, we probably uh, should wrap it up here. I have had a blast talking about the record. Where can they find it? You can find it on iTunes, yeah, iTunes, uh, Apple Music, everywhere. Everywhere you can buy oh, music, Spotify, Amazon, it's all there. Or you can, if you want a hard copy, you can go to littleroyandlizzy.com. Little Roy, just spelled just like that A N D L I Z Z Y. In fact, I can put it in this chat right here, I guess. And Lizzie spelled with a Y, by the way. A Y, a big Y, y'all. Not know none of that. Now, I've, got a, I've got a stash of ink pens that have Little Roy and Lizzie with an IE. And you said, when you were coming to the studio and you said, oh. They misspelled my name. You want some pens? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I still got a bunch of Little Roy and Lizzie IE. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's wrong. Oh. So, got it. Okay, I got that. That was in the private chat. Wow. I'll put it in the comments so people will be able to find it later. Yeah, I'm still Disney, it was fun hanging out. It's good seeing you. I'm glad you're okay. Uh, I, and I hope you've been taking it easy and hadn't get too bored. But no. you've got as many as many dogs and cats and animals and cars and instruments. It's been uh, pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, you you won't you won't search for anything to do, right? That's right. That's right. Look, I sure enjoyed it. Y'all take care and y'all learn how to mix them tunes now. You hear? <laughs> All right. Bye, Lizzie. Bye bye. All right, so cool. That was a fun conversation with Lizzie. Uh, the links are in the comment section if you want to go check out her record. Uh, another couple of things that uh, that we did. We did all of her vocals in a day, in one day at Capitol. And we had time to go to lunch and go out that night. So uh, t doing vocals doesn't have to take a long time. Uh, and we comped them all. It wasn't like we did one pass and left it alone. We did uh, multiple takes on all the songs. It's just uh, having a workflow is really important. So if, um, uh, yeah. So if you got any questions, hit me up tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow, speaking of tomorrow, I've got Chris Crunk coming on. We're going to be talking about the new, uh, a couple of new plugins. They're not new anymore, but they're new to me. And uh, he's going to kind of break them down and show me how he uses them. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a kind of like a crash course uh, on these uh, things. And that is the, um, Isotope Neutron and uh, Track Spacer. And he says that those are like revolutionary plugins that every mixer not only should use, but if you don't it, end up using them long term, um, to use them to learn how to EQ things and what, what frequencies to listen for, because this plugin will help you do that. So, anyway, it's been good hanging out with you guys this morning. I hope that I will see you in the morning at eight o'clock Pacific. 
uh, 11 o'clock on the West Coast, East Coast. And uh, until then, uh, take care, and I'll see you tomorrow.